recent years, there have been many attacks against the seal of the Sacrament of Confession. The apparent cause is the publication of many reports about the number of alleged sexual abuses by clergy. These reports have also instilled in public opinion a fictitious legitimization by civil authorities of intervening in the area of religious liberty, concretely seeking to violate the sacramental seal of confession when this regards sexual abuses. Today, a tragic plague present in every sector of society. Well, it's the sacramental seal. That is to say, it's called the sacramental seal. The priest is bound to keep a total seal on everything he receives within the sacrament of confession. This is a duty that he has, even when the penitent offers to liberate him from it. The confessor must maintain it. The penitent cannot free him from this seal. It is a duty that the minister has carried out in the name of the Creator, who is the only one who can forgive sins. The Catechism of the Catholic Church explains that given the delicacy and greatness of this ministry, and the respect due to persons, the Church declares that every priest who hears confessions is bound under very severe penalties to keep absolute secrecy regarding the sins that his penitents have confessed to him. This secret, which admits no exceptions, is called the sacramental seal, because what the penitent has made known to the priest remains sealed by the sacrament. The violation of the sacramental seal is a canonical penalty, a canonical censure, that leads to excommunication. Effectively, the priest would have to submit himself to whatever unjust penalty so as to protect the seal, something that is his duty before God and his ministry. The canonical censure is regulated by Canon 1388 of the Code of Canon Law, which establishes that a confessor who directly violates the sacramental seal incurs a late sententia excommunication reserved to the apostolic see. One who does so only indirectly is to be punished according to the gravity of the crime. It is important to distinguish three aspects of this relationship between priest and faithful underscored also in a note from the Apostolic Penitentiary on the 1st of July, 2019. First, one thing is the sacramental seal, that is, that which the priest receives in the sacrament of confession. Second, another thing is the internal extra-sacramental forum, such as spiritual direction. Third, and finally, the information shared under the seal of the secret, under which falls the pontifical secret. Some months ago, the Pope lifted the pontifical secret from all the issues related to the treatment of the crimes of pedophilia and pederasty. Previously, they were included within the penal cases, the penal processes, and all of these were matters of the pontifical secret. But the Pope has lifted it. What does this mean? That it can be spoken of? No, no, this just means that this is no longer under the pontifical secret, and that one must inform those individuals who have legitimacy to have access to that information on these matters, but they continue to be preserved. It is important to insist on the difference between the professional secret and the seal of confession. That seal, as Pope Francis has strongly affirmed, Although it is not always understood by the modern mentality, it is indispensable for the sanctity of the sacrament and for the freedom of the conscience of the penitent.